Coffee Walk. Today is a great day. What an incredible day to be alive. The weather is beautiful outside. I have got a sea of Jeeps to show y'all. I've been on a buying spree. I've bought a ton and we've got a bunch of customer Jeeps in. Some really cool stuff to see. And we have some new products from the Black Mountain line that Chris and Colin have test fitted. Gave me the thumbs up. Said they are outstanding. So we're going to go in and check those out too. So hang with us. We're going to look at YJ, CJ, and JK today. We do have some really cool TJs in, but I'm going to save those for you for the future. So let's see what's happening in Black Mountain. This actually was a lot of work to get this accomplished. So here are our new flares are going to be released soon. Chris, you said they fit great? Yeah, perfect. Packaging super nice when we open them up. Really well wrapped. Yep. So this time we've got the wide flare, correct? Yes, sir. So this is aluminum instead of steel. So those of you guys in the uh, rust belt areas that are having problems with the steel products, which everybody does, we made these out of aluminum. And it is a much more difficult process to do than the steel. They're direct bolt on, they look great. Now this is sitting on what, a three or four inch lift? Three inch. Three inch lift, 35 inch tires. Of course, we've got the Black Mountain wheels. And there are some states now that require you to cover the entire tire. So check this out, look from the front, you're covering it, you're gonna be legal. Now, and on this side, we've got our 10 inch wide flare, which almost covers the tire, but a lot of people like this look as well. But if you're gonna be running a 35 or a 37, and you have a state that is uh, anal retentive, if you will, or have passed some crazy laws, like, I don't know, that state that starts with a CA, you're probably gonna want the 12 inch wide flares, but they fit great. Watch these up and coming. They'll be uh, on blackmountain.com, and you can look them up. They'll have our pricing soon. So tell me what you think. Do you like the 12 inch or the 10 inch? Let's go check out some of these Jeeps outside. Morning, George. Morning, Dennis. Wow, we got a lot of Jeeps. So this is a customer's Islander YJ, which was cool. We used to sell a lot of these back in the day. This Jeep's been sitting for a long time, and since it's 2003, he brought it in. We did a major service and added fuel injections. He's gonna start driving it every day. It's cool to see these YJs coming to life. Now this is one I just bought. I actually chased this Jeep for quite a while. It's an 87. So technically that's supposed to be the first year of the YJ. This is an original paint with 42,000 actual miles on it. Here's what's really cool about this Jeep. Lots of cool things about this Jeep. So the date code for the build of this Jeep is five of 1986. This is a really early YJ. This guy's done some cool stuff to it. In 87 and 88, these YJs had Peugeot transmissions in them, which are maybe good to 80 or 90,000 miles. This was a special order automatic, which is really cool. Power steering, power brakes and tilt. And what he has done recently to this Jeep, we didn't actually do the work, but I know how much work it is. He did lift kit wheels and tires. And yes, those are JK Rubicon wheels, but he also did fuel injection and brand new AC. And it has power steering, power brakes and tilt. This will be a really cool driver quality YJ. This will be up on the site soon, but to find a 42,000 mile original paint Jeep like that, and to see one that was built five of 86 is kind of cool. The 86 Renegade is shipping out today. This is a TJ that we bought that we're going to service that will be for sale up front. This is a customer CJ that just came in for service, been sitting for a while as well. Now, here's one that I'm real happy with that came in. Uh, I bought this from a man who has owned a car store for many years. He knows how to describe a Jeep. 1986 Renegade with 100% original paint. Now, some of you are going to cringe, some of them not. You saw what we did to the Bronco. We clear coated it. I think I'm going to clear coat this Jeep because it's rust free and it's original paint. I don't want to take away from that. My question to you guys out there is should I leave the original decals, which have some cracking and patina, and these are a painted surface. These were 3M, so they're painted on them, so we can scuff all this and re clear and it'll brighten them back up. Or should I take the decals off, do our light scuff, heavy clear, color sand and buff, which the Jeep will look great. It'll just, it will have some patina spots, and then put fresh decals on it. Now it's original soft top on this Jeep, which we just don't see that often anymore. Nicely optioned, T176, tilt wheel. Of course, since it's a Renegade, you do have the black denim seats. Another nice thing is it does have its original dash pad in it. This has always been a soft top Jeep and it doesn't have the cutout on the side. These are not in reproduction. They are tough to find. So 
I love black CJs. There's not a ton of them out there. This body is super straight. I'm really, really happy with it. You can look up and down the sides. I almost think it's a shame to paint it, but the clear is so chalky that it's not gonna buff out. So let me know what you think about my uh, patina Jeep idea. We've done that on a lot of hot rods, rat rods, trucks and other things, but we've never done it to a good CJ. Um, I think it'll turn out cool. Now, here's the big project that I want to do. I looked really, really hard for this YJ. That's the customer's Renegade that we service. It's getting back on the road, too. This is a 95. It's the last year they built the YJ. Had a really neat story. We bought it from an elderly lady. It was super nice. She got it on Valentine's Day because it was red. I actually bought this February 14th on Valentine's Day a couple of weeks ago. Now, this Jeep has 15,000 actual miles on it. Now, I was actually looking for a really short mile four cylinder. I only knew of two of them in the country and I was chasing both of them pretty hard. But if you look inside this Jeep, it is like brand new. Why would I want a four cylinder YJ? Well, let me tell you why. We're basically gonna park this Jeep out. So, the hard top, the upper sliders, the sidebars, the wheels, the tires, the motor, the transmission, the transfer case, the front and rear bumpers are all going to get sold off of this Jeep. So if you want a really short mile YJ drivetrain, this is probably your opportunity to get it. Now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put a 2020 drivetrain in this. The V6 Pentastar, which I love that motor, is 285 horsepower. We're going to supercharge it. It'll be 385 horsepower with an eight-speed automatic. This thing is going to be killer. So let me know what you think about that idea. Um, if it was a six-cylinder, 15,000-mile YJ, I wouldn't do that. It probably would be sacrilegious in the Jeep world. It's a four-cylinder YJ, so let me know what you think about that. Very cool Renegade. This is a customer's Jeep. This YJ just came in. Uh, we did a rebuilt motor. It is a four-liter. You've seen this one in the body shop. We finally got a stripe to match the original ones and finished it. It came in, it was hitting the quarter. So the stripes on it, it's done. Now I wanna show you on the other side, I mean, we are loaded with Jeeps, but we don't have to, our guys can keep up with it. If you need your service to restore, bring it in. Morning, Juice. Morning, Colby. Morning, sir. Takes two of you guys to get a tire off now? Teaching me. Oh. <laughs> okay. I should have dug this out you can see it better, but I want you to see it anyways. Yes, we found another Golden Hawk. There was only 651 of them built. We had that white one last year. It was the only white one I've ever seen. This is a white one. It is original paint. Here is the uh, kicker and the downfall of it. This might be the rarest Golden Hawk ever built, and here's why. The rare is not always desirable. It's got an Iron Duke four cylinder in it. These motors were terrible when they were new, just my opinion. We've always had problems with them. So, I want to restore this because I love the Golden Hawk. The body's good, it's straight. Question is, and I love OE style restorations, and so do a lot of guys out there, but should we put a 2020 drivetrain in this? So, I'm talking the 3.6 Pentastar with an eight speed automatic, the killer, or I've got a JK motor that we pull out. It's got a supercharger on it. Or should I simply go with a six cylinder, which would be the easiest way to do it, because I don't want to go back with a four. Or would you rather see a 304 or 360 V8? So let me know from a project standpoint, which one you'd like to see cosmetically from the outside. I'm going to make it look like it just rolled off the showroom floor. Same with the inside, but I want to change the powertrain. So which powertrain do you want to see? Please like, tag, share, and follow. If you got time this weekend, one of my favorite things to do on Sunday when I'm unwinding is binge watch. Go to YouTube, Dennis Collins Car World. I'm gonna ask you a big favor. We need you to go ahead and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. We're really hoping to get to 100,000 subscribers soon. Tyler and Kelsey worked incredibly hard. Have a great day. We've got Jeeps everywhere.